first of all, many thanks for your time. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm honored to be able to do this for you. So, um, um, I've got a lot of questions for yes. you because uh, I've discovered, I must say, I've discovered your gastronomy here yes. in, at Madrid Fusion and I found a lot of uh, new products yes. that I didn't even know that existed. Uh, yeah, yes. they is, existed. So, um, in which uh, method are those products inside your cuisine? For example, tabon, tabon, um, yes. your lime. Exactly. Well, um, first of all, the exotic ingredients um, like the tabon tabon and the different limes, the suwa, the calamansi, and the calamunding. I mean, because we presented the quinilao, of course, I, I had to, to be an advocate not to, to show it and introduce it to the Madrid Fusion um, community. But I think that um, all the other ingredients, like the batuan, the souring agents that our, our cuisine is known for, you have that, you have guava, you have the, the balimbing, which is the same as carambola, you have uh, tamarindo, you have um, even, even our tomatoes, because our tomatoes are not sweet like the ones in Italy. Our tomatoes are used for souring. All of this, I think, is very interesting, but they're very commonly used in our cuisine and I think that maybe also because the trend at the moment is all things sour, I think that it's also um, quite timely that um, that we're allowed and, and able to be blessed with introducing Filipino cuisine at Madrid Fusion this year. Um, aside from that, I think another interesting trend um, is the trend of fermentation and that is also very, very uh, present in our in our cuisine. So there's um, we do fermented rice, we do fermented fish um, for for sauces and for flavorings. So I think that um, it's a good time to start and to introduce our 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 very wide range of ingredients. And we're looking forward to um, having our presence at Madrid Fusion every year now moving forward. Yeah, but uh, I know that you are Philippine, your cuisine is Philippine, but inside your cuisine, your own cuisine, your oh, own, my own cuisine, your okay. own creative cuisine, in which measure are those ingredients mixed together? Okay, for my own cuisine, maybe because I'm Negrense, I also have my own souring agent, like the Batuan. So when I when I cook, especially when it's a, a presentation of a Filipino menu, I, I use a lot of those souring agents and at the same time also because my background is working uh, with Italian cuisine um, I try to, to include um, those ingredients when I do the, the plates that are also um, styled according to my background with Italian cooking. So if I do let's say a fresh pasta um, I use a calamansi cream when the pasta has um, seafood and then I add that beautiful crab coral that's my favorite ingredient in the Philippines it's called the balantalanka it's this orange paste that has such a particular flavor and it comes from crabs that are this tiny so they have to they have to um, shell maybe a whole sack like this of crabs just to make one bottle of that beautiful sauce so it's such a special ingredient and when I put that on pasta and then add the souring, the calamansi, it breaks, it breaks, it breaks the fishiness of the crab paste and it comes out all beautiful and then I do it with like a, a pasta made with our water spinach, very uh, green vegetable. And I think that that's one of like my most cornerstone dishes from, from when I started to cook um, Italian food and then also when I started to also be able to prepare elegant Filipino menus when I, I represent the country abroad or when I cook for the Philippine government. Um, it's nice to mix those ingredients and have a very sort of international way of presenting the dishes. Yes, um, I know that your restaurant is called Grace Park. Yes, one of them. Yes, the latest one, I, the farm to table one is Grace yes, Park. Yes, yes. We, we will, we will uh, talk about uh, the 
other concepts you've yes. got because this is not the, 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 the only restaurant you yes. have. But uh, I've got a question uh, related to the name. Why yes. Grace Park? Okay, Grace Grace Park is a is a it's a neighborhood in the Philippines, um, in 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 Metro Manila, where my father's family had a house, and I grew up spending Sunday Sunday lunches there with my my dad's um, parents, and. Um, It was a. They they love to eat and they love to dance and and they were a, a you know they are a very sort of happy um, family that loves to entertain and to eat well and um, it brings back really good memories the the local of Grace Park but because I started to work with um, with the organic farmers in the Philippines very recently and I also I'm very particular about advocating let's say heirloom rice or all these. Um, Um, growers who are are, are now um, becoming plentiful in the Philippines. You know, working with our our endemic ingredients and and planting them in a creative way, or introducing things that have been there for a long time that people have taken for granted because they're very common. People grow them in their backyards. So I wanted Grace Park to be a showcase for this, some some place where I can um, introduce the the produce of these farmers so that they can have a larger market um, with my clients so the word grace takes on a different meaning now for me the grace is I guess that gift that I can share with with other with others in the restaurant industry so that we can also at the same time help the farmers and um, also really help the 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 simple the simple people in the Philippines so that they can also have better livelihood and at the same time this place can celebrate all these wonderful ingredients that are now available all the way from the top of Luzon all the way to the bottom of Mindanao from the whole all, all parts of the Philippines yes um, you touched a, a very important point that is the uh, importance that have high cuisine and the uh, cookers and chefs in yes. developing their own countries, the, their own produce yes. in the countries. So uh, you've talked about it, but is there any program especially? Well, yes, I'm working very for that. closely with the Undersecretary of Agriculture. Her name is Bernadette Pomiat. And um, we're helping her, as, uh, me as a chef, to use the produce that that she knows of because she works with the farmers very closely. So that's, that's um, we, we have this program now and we've been um, representing the Philippines in different um, fairs, food fairs abroad. We've done Salone del Gusto um, in Torino, which is the, the biggest, I think, by biannual. I think it happens every two years um, in, in Italy where all the artisan producers and the farmers from all over the world and um, the advocates of slow food present all these ingredients that are either very rare or almost extinct and they have this thing called the arc of taste where everybody presents all the ingredients from all over the world that not too many people know about that are either in danger of no longer being around or that are heirloom products. So this is going, we've done it two years now and, and every two years the Philippines will have a presence at Salone del Gusto. Mm -hmm. We also attended Grunewald in Berlin, which mm -hmm. is the largest organic um, fair also in Europe. So we presented mm -hmm. Filipino ingredients there. Um, at the same time, um, there was a, an event also in Paris at the Musée de Quiberon Lee where there was a Filipino um, artifacts uh, collection that was exhibited for 60 days. And to launch the exhibit, um, Under Secretary Puyat brought us Filipino chefs to do a Filipino lunch for the media. So it really was a chance to present um, our beautiful ingredients. At the same time, we brought our fruit jams and our jellies and our fresh fruit and served them alongside, let's say, beautiful French bayon ham in Paris. Or here, we did it with Spanish cheeses. And then the, the jamon iberico, we served with our fresh mango and pomelo. Because then, I think it also um, can, can make the understanding of our products a little bit more um, um, 
a it's little easier. easier for, yes, for the for the foreign palate to appreciate because when you have it with something that's familiar to the foreign market, then right away they understand. Oh, this is beautiful together. So I think that that's um, one one kind of um, platform that I that I've been um, advocating. And thanks to Undersecretary Puyat that she's been, you know, working with us very closely. She has uh, this beautiful grain that our Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary Alcala, wants us to introduce. It's called Adlai, and it's um, it's something that grows a lot in the Philippines. Not too many people know about it, mm. but it it can be a support for for our our farmers. Um, for the farmers because then sometimes the rice is not plentiful so this adlai is an alternative so we're using it tonight at the at the goya restaurant but it's beautiful it looks like faro it looks like um like the faro in Italy. So I'm like surprised that the same grain, very similar grain, also grows in the Philippines. And mm. even um, many of us Filipinos don't are not aware because it's a very sort of um, provincial grain. In grown only um, in it was grown in the north at mm. first, and now some farmers are growing it already in Mindanao, which is I think the most um, the most uh, fertile part of our country. It's the largest part and it's also with the best um, kind of, I think, weather conditions for growing all these things. So they're growing it now in the province of Bukidnon. Uh -huh. You've talked about slow food. Yes. <laughs> so which is the importance of being slow in cuisine, in high cuisine? And in, your, and in your cuisine. And in my cuisine, yes, definitely. Um, I think going back to basics and, and, you know, using earthen pots again to prepare food, that was something that, that was the cornerstone of Filipino cooking. And it would be nice to advocate that and bring that back. Um, it, it, there's always a temptation to do things really quickly. But I think that both the, my background in Italian cooking and then my, my awareness of my own cuisine, both cuisines are based on slow slow food um, principles. And so I, I, I like to, to kind of marry the, the, two, the two different cuisines and use the same concepts and the same principles in preparing the food that I do. So when I'm out of the Philippines, I cook Filipino. And when I'm back in the Philippines, I, I cook Italian, Italian and Filipino also. <laughs> And now maybe also start doing Spanish. We mm -hmm. actually do some Spanish, some Spanish repertoires already. Mm -hmm. I learned from an aunt of mine who lived in Madrid for 30 years, uh -huh. and she was cooking for a family. And uh -huh. you know, um, she's passed away. But a few years before she passed away, she called me and she says, "You know, I have this wealth of knowledge about how how to make paella on firewood and how to make croquetas the real way. I want to teach you." So we, she, I went back to my home province and she taught me so I I can do a little bit of Spanish as well and that all that cooking over firewood that definitely is another slow food um, manifestation so I'm, I'm very excited that all of that is something that I like to celebrate in, in my cooking I do a lot of, of catering work in the Philippines and when I started I was just by myself and you know I was doing pasta a lot and of course you know pasta can't be cooked ahead of time so I would do it all by myself and and we would do it almost a la minute before right before serving and that's that's the concept that I kind of have carried through through the years I started cooking only for like 15 people 10 people until it started to grow and it started to be weddings of 300 and I never stopped using those principles so my team is very trained to prepare food on site we never bring things already prepared only the roasts but most everything the pasta we cook on the spot the the, the fish we grill on the spot because we I, I feel that when you hasten things and you pre-prepare mm. the quality of the food suffers so slow food is to do it from the raw and do it really on the spot without pre-preparing although it takes more effort because you need to be fast and you need to have a very good system in place I think that modesty aside we've mastered it in the 27 years that I've been with my catering business. Yes. 
uh, let, uh, let us uh, know about the, the other concepts because yes. you've talked uh, about your high cuisine concept is Grace Park. Yes. You've talked about uh, also your catering business. But uh, ha what about your the rest of the concepts? Yes. I've read about a concept related to flowers and to... Oh, yes. yes it's also. Fiori Diem. And um, I, I started that because my catering business is Chibo Diem or the food of M, the food of Margarita. And eventually, I'm, I'm also... Um, very interested in, in doing beautiful aesthetics. Um, I, I, I love um, setting the table and I'm very particular about the, the linens and I feel that if I'm already doing the food, it would be nice to make the, the concept and the product more holistic. In other words, even the flowers on the table should be styled and should have a connection to the food. So it's a concept that um, that I started um, a little bit late. There were other florists that I learned from when I started to do my catering. So I wanted to do a concept that was a little bit different from the way regular florists in Manila would do it. So what I did was I, I want I make all my my arrangements have something, maybe 30 or 40 percent of the arrangement needs to be either something that's reusable for a different purpose, whether it's food, fruit, or vegetables, or something that comes from nature's discards, maybe tree bark or pods from the tree that have fallen, then we, or vines, and we create that into the arrangement so that you're also being um, a little bit sort of more prudent with protecting the environment. We also like to use, let's say, live plants, su succulents, or, or um, orchids that have, still have their roots on, because I find that um, the, the more the value of the product is extended and you're not like cutting flowers and just using them for that dinner and then throwing them away after, I feel that there's that added value of, of, of social responsibility, again putting more grace into, into the things that I do. And I think that it's, although, you know, it, and, and what I try to do also is to make sure that the prices for the flowers are a little bit lower because then, of course, you're, we're already doing the food for the client. So I think that they don't need to spend the same way they would if they were to hire a special florist. So we try to incorporate it and make the flowers also more um, done in a more responsible and a more prudent way. And the other concepts? Well, they yes. Are there's Chibo, which is the Italian cafe that has 10 stores. That's the first restaurant that I opened. And it's really meant to be um, a quick meal with value for money in a shopping mall environment. So that's turning 18 this year. 18 so years. 18 years. So it's it's been a while, but I'm, I'm just very happy to say that it's still thriving. Um, I think that for the restaurant business, it's a challenge to even, you know, be, be open for three, three years to make it three years or five years so um, the blessing of having had that concept for 18 years now a lot of our clientele have grown up eating our food they started coming to us when they were like six seven years old and now they're already college students and they, they've grown up eating the food of Chibo so it's very nice then I have a champagne bar called Russo mm -hmm. um, which is very elegant it's very old world very tiny in Manila it has only 27 seats, but it's meant to be like a like a hotel lobby, not in a hotel. So it's a little bit of some French dishes, some some Italian, but it's an all-day dining concept, like a hotel lobby. The waiters are in white jackets, like at the lobby of the Ritz or at uh, at uh, maybe um, at Harry's Bar in in Venice. That's the uh -huh. kind of concept yeah. because in Manila there are very few old-world concepts left. So that's a very nice one. It, that one is five years old. It's called Luso. Luso, uh, that's all. Me, and then, thinking about... Yeah, I, then I also have a, a packaged food um, division, which is called Gastroteca DM. So it's the breads that we make, the sauces that we bottle, and we want people to be able to take some of our food home. Uh, with them. So uh, when I find this interesting, let's say the dul dul salt, the salt that comes as a rock, we package that so that people can either bring it with them abroad or can discover all these things that are from from the, the provinces that many people are not aware about, even the my, my fellow Filipinos. So it's something of 
being able to to share um, those wonderful ingredients that come from artists and producers from all over our country. Do you have any online uh, store to? Um, sell I'm the starting the online store. My website <laughs> just went up, and all the concepts are there. the The, the newest one is um, a little, uh, well, a hotel concept uh, with the Ascot brand. Mm -hmm. They opened a new store in in Metro, Man a new brand branch in Metro Manila. It's a 220 room hotel. So I'm doing the, the hotel restaurant there. It's called Alta. Mm -hmm. And um, well, aside from that, I have a diet delivery business called M Healthline. So we started with the, uh, with the, um, with the, what's the name of the, the diet that, not the Cohen, the other one. South Beach, the South Beach diet, the all mm. protein, no carb diet. I started that eight years ago. And we deliver um, wellness diets to people to their homes um, every day. They do like a one week or a two week <laughs> diet with us. And we deliver the five meals for them to eat every day. So we do that. Um, uh, we have a very small clientele, but you know we've been doing it for eight years. So when people gain a little weight, they come back. And they and they come to us again for that. Mm -hmm. uh, you've talked about your concepts, uh, and now I have a question for you. I I can see, and all my readers can see to this point, that you got a very wide room for business in your own country. Yes. But are you thinking about going abroad? Oh gosh, yes, I have been thinking of going abroad. Um, I would like to bring Chibo maybe somewhere in Southeast Asia. And I think now also because I'm I'm doing a lot of work in Italy, that's the one concept I haven't spoken about. It's at Casa Artuzzi, Philippines. It's um, the franchise of Casa Artuzzi, which is a culinary center in for Limpopoli in Italy, in the region of Emilia Romagna. And it advocates Pellegrino Artusi's philosophy, the father of modern Italian cooking. So we're bringing that to Asia. So I guess I am now abroad <laughs> because I'm, I've brought that franchise to Manila. We've started doing classes, and um, it's nice because it's a, it's an intercontinental concept. So we, we go to Italy every year to do Filipino food there at, at Casa Artuzzi. At the same time, we bring Casa Artuzzi to Manila and we are doing some events with the Italian Embassy mm -hmm. and we've started our classes so we teach people how to make fresh pasta by hand. Mm -hmm. And again, it's another slow food advocacy. So that that one is, is very, very close to my heart because then um, Although Casa Artuzzi is an Italian concept, the philosophies there can be applied as well to Filipino cooking or are manifested a lot in the philosophy also of Filipino cooking and the way we Filipinos, um, our lives revolve around our mothers and revolve around the dining table. That's very similar to the way it is in Italy and I think in all of Europe. So it's a, it's a, it's just starting but I'm, I'm very excited about it so all of that's also on my website I know but and the the last question I think everybody to this point is thinking about this how do you manage oh. <laughs> I think that I have a lot of energy and um, although I've been doing this for 27 years it's still feels great and new because there's always a lot of learning. I think the more the more you you develop your passion and you get involved in growing your business, there's also a lot of lessons to learn. I mean, I've I've had some concepts that I, that I've had to close and I think those are also, you know, a some of the biggest lessons for me. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I have a son who's 24, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that one day he'll come to join me and help me. And um, I also have um, a, a, a wonderful group of young people who are who are helping me um, get my work done, like Angelo here, <laughs> you know, who, who's also, I mean, who kind of understands my mindset mm -hmm. and, and makes things easier for me. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really, hoping I can create clones of myself so that it'll be easier to, to get things done all at the same time. So thank you for asking that. This is this is the point. You are you are able to teach people. Mm -hmm. So that's very important yes. in order to grow. And that's make a very, 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 very big chef. You know? Oh thank so, you. So 
So to this point, I, I just have to say thank you to you. Thank you too. And thanks for your time, thank of course. Thank you. Please don't miss our magazine and keep yes. in touch. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you.